Sherry is our next question up. And Sherry says, when do you start making payments on lease options? 30, 60 or 90 days? Do you tell the seller you'll start making payments as soon as you have a tenant buyer? And on vacation rentals, who pays in the off season? So that's two different sets of questions. So let's take in the first two and then the third one. Okay, so when do you start making payments on lease options? I tell my seller that it's gonna be 90 days before I make the first payment. So today is October 11th, October's payment's done. Mr. Seller, you're gonna be responsible for November, December, and January. I will make February's payment. Now, going to Sherry's second question. Mr. Seller, if I get somebody in here before the end of October, I could go ahead and start making November's payment. That's totally fine with me because, I mean, that's just three more months that I'm gonna be paying off on what I owe you. Right? If I get somebody in in December, if I get somebody in in January, you know, I'll do my best. But I tell you what, if you'll give me these three months, I'll pay for all the closing costs for you. I'll pay for the attorney. I'll pay for, you know, whatever. That way, flip side guys, if I do get somebody in in November, I get three months of payments before I have a payment due back out. So I'll get another $3,000 on top of the option fee. I was already gonna use part of the option fee to pay the attorney. Might as well use part of those three months rent that I have that I have no mortgage. And the seller's okay with it. I've had sellers give me six months before I had to make a payment. I had one seller call me and say, hey, we heard you do lease options. Or, hey, we heard that you do owner financing. We got a house, but it's August. Our tenants haven't paid all year. If you'll buy it from us and help us get them out, don't worry about making a payment until January because really we hadn't made any money on it this year and it'll just mess up our taxes. So we'll just write the whole year off as a loss and you can start making payments in January. You want to come by the house? And I was like, hold on, let me sit down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the only time somebody has called me and said, hey, take my house. We'll give you owner financing. We'll charge you no interest for 15 years if you'll just take away. Okay. So you get the best you can, you do the best you can, and then you take it and keep doing the best that you can. All right. Uh, Sherry's second question was about vacation rentals and who pays in the off season. Honey, if you decide to make that payment, you are going to be paying it rain or shine. When you make that first payment, you have a payment due until you cash out, until you pay it off, or until Jesus comes back. I mean, whichever one happens first, you are paying it. And I don't care if you got any renters in there or not. You agreed to pay it. You're going to hold up your word. You're going to do what you said. You're going to work your tail off to make sure that even in the off season, somebody's staying in it for a weekend to pay your mortgage. You uh, make hay while the sun's shining and you nut it for winter. Okay? You make 10,000 one month and your payment's 2,000 and you got some months where you make 1,500, you better keep those 10,000 months to carry you through the slow off season in your vacation rental. When you sign that you're gonna make those payments and you start making those payments, those payments are yours. But that's on vacation rentals. That doesn't happen with tenant buyers. They don't just leave in the off season.